Hi, if you want to skip the intro, the video is timestamped below. My name is Alexandre Dibouane, I've been a concept artist for the video game industry and a biz dev artist for the animation industry for almost 11 years now. You can see some examples of my work on screen right now. I've worked in-house at the beginning of my career, but I quickly decided to freelance from home, which for me is the best solution, but as a lot of you probably know, working from home does present a bunch of challenges, notably how to organize your day and how to keep track of your time and your projects. There are other things that come with freelancing, but this video will focus on how I deal with organization as a freelancer. I'm diagnosed with ADHD like a lot of us are, and I do take medication to help me be less of a walking mess. However, medication cannot do everything, and I still find myself obligated to adhere to a strict-ish work routine in order to be a functioning artist. It's only been about three years that I've started to truly force myself to be organized when it comes to work, and although it is obviously a bit more work than just winging it, it has really helped me to be less anxious, less stressed, and overall to feel more in control of my time. The following is how I categorize and organize my projects and how I keep track of my hours and file them. It is a method that works for me, it might not work for you, but I figure it might give you some ideas and show you some of the tools available that you could apply to yourself. I use free websites, all of them are free, they do have paid versions, which offer advanced users, but the free versions are way more than enough for me. We're going to use Hack and Plan, which is a website mainly aimed at game devs to organize their projects, but it can be easily adapted to organize any pipelines, be it illustration work, animation work, etc. etc. Then Clockify, which is a time tracker, and Google Sheet to file my invoices. So we'll start with Hack and Plan, and as you'll see for all three of those websites, I made new accounts to show you how to start from zero. We are now in Hack and Plan. Uh, it might look daunting. Uh, there's a lot of you know features in UI, but do not be intimidated. To make it work for us, we're gonna use only a very few amount of very basic features. To start, you go top left on New, and you create a new project. It's gonna ask you what kind of project you want, what type. We're gonna go for custom, and we're gonna unclick Enable Game Design Model and unclick Notification. If you want notification, obviously keep it. Uh, enabled, but I don't want any. Then you get your name of the project. For the project, I'm gonna choose Orgadem. As you can see, I've already entered it. Description, you can make an description, you know, cost metric, you can choose hour, days, of, or point, and you can have general info. If you want them, you can have them, or you can just create them empty. All right, now you are on your dashboard. There's a lot of things going on. We don't really care about all that. What we care about, at least what I care about when I organize myself, are boards. As you can see here, there's a lot of uh, already existing boards. So what I'm going to do is delete all of them because I don't need them. So, you know, you just write delete in all caps. Usually I just control A, control C, just so I can delete all of them uh, uh, quickly. I'll do that real quick. As you can see, that takes five seconds. All right, bear with me for a second. I do not want to do too much editing on that video. There we go. So now we don't have any uh, board anymore. So you just go on new and you click a uh, new board. So now the board name can be anything. Let's imagine I'm, uh, const I, you know, I want to be making a castle in my project. It's not going to be castle. You can enter a description. You can set a milestone. So a due date, um, you know, if you really need to hold yourself accountable. So start date and due date and general info create. <clears throat> now we have four categories. And this is where uh, most, actually for me, all of um, my hack and plan uh, organization is done. You have planned, in progress, testing, completed. There's four categories in which you can create and move them around. Uh, actually, you can't move those categories around, but I'll show you. You have two things. Uh, so if you click on new, you have a task and a user story. Those are basically, um, well, let's start with user story. And that's a big group. So that's going to be, let's say, you know, I'm in the, the board castle and let's say I'm going to focus uh, today on, uh, I don't know, like the inside of the castle. All right. So now I have a user story. That's like or a big category. In that category, we can click new on top of on top right here and put a task and a task is like goes inside a user story. Let's say door. All right. You also have categories on those, so you know you can just choose whatever. Usually, you know, you just choose art. It doesn't really matter. It matters if you have a team. Right now, you don't have a team, but you know, and you can uh, assign this um, this task to a board. So we want castle here. 
Um, if you do many tasks in a row, you'll want to um, cre click create and continue. But if you only do one task at a time, uh, you can just create. It's going to take a bit of time. And now we have door and inside. You can move all of those things, you know, independently. And what I usually do then, you click on door and that's going to that's gonna get open. You have different ways, different modes. So you can choose tabs or one page. I usually like uh, one page. It's the same thing, except now uh, all the information on one page is here. It's just a matter of preference. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my door. So m add this task to a story. So I'm going to just type the first letters and it's telling me, here you go. Click on inside and now my uh, this little task is assigned to this big task. And as you can see, if I click on inside, now part of the tasks are uh, here. If I ever uh, complete a task, it'll, it'll show it. A last thing uh, about those things is inside tasks, you can basically have subtasks. So let's say for doors, uh, I need, uh, you know, you can add a subtask, subtask, sub thank you. And you can do, uh, okay, so I need the hinges. And I need, I don't know, uh, a doorknob. All right. So now once you're done, let's say you've just finished designing your hinges, you can be like, all right, and it'll show it here. One or two, you design your doorknob. All right, I'm completely done with doors. Once you're done with doors, uh, you know, you can do a number of things. What I usually do is um, let's just create a, just a bunch of tasks. First, a door, and let's just say walls. All right. Uh, gonna put my wall into my story inside. Here we go. Here we go. So the way I usually organize myself is um, I have all the tasks that I need to do, but I still I have not been started yet on here, on plan. That's actually you know self-explanatory. What I usually do is um, when I have a work meeting, I open Hack and Plan and I just create all, you know, a bunch of tasks during the work meeting, uh, trying to understand all the tasks I need to do. And at the end of the meeting, I, I, I tell the, I'll tell the director, I'll be like, okay, so here are the tasks I've uh, created. Are they okay? Do they need changing? You know, that's really helpful. Uh, you know, you can just take notes right away and it's already in hack and plan. You don't need to add anything more. Once something is in progress, I'm working on it. Uh, I move it to in progress. And this is uh, where testing and completed are not going to be what they are uh, written. Usually once I'm finished with the tasks, I go into testing and I'm going to log my hours. So in order to log my hours, I'll look at Clockify, uh, but I'll show that you later on Clockify. But let's say I know that I worked eight hours on that door. I'm going to click here on log work. And then it's just telling me, you know, how many hours have you worked on it? You press eight and that's going to tell you, you know, eight. It's telling you eight of zero hours because you haven't uh, put an estimate of the work. We don't really care about that. You know, you, you've worked eight hours on it. Um, and basically I put it on completed. So when, when you put it on completed, it's going to tell you to log time. If you haven't worked more on it, you just press zero and you're good. If you work two hours more, you just enter two hours. Let's just enter two and you know, you'll have work 10. This is basically, um, I put those here when I filed them inside my, uh, invoice. So that's the whole, that's the whole thing about hack and plan. It's just really useful. You can move things around, you know, if suddenly you realize, oh, I've, I thought I was done with it, but I'm not, go back in progress, done with it, all right, and completed is uh, once you file it. All right, the second one is going to be Clockify. So Clockify is same, a lot of things, you know, kind of look similar sometimes to, um, uh, to Hack and Plan, but really the only way I use it is I create a project. So no project yet, we're going to create a project, Orgadem. Orgadem. You can select a client if you have some templates, you know. Basically, I just do that. And then I, uh, you know, start and stop. Basically, starting and stopping will allow you to um, uh, launch the thing. You'll need to start it and stop it really quickly. You know, you have like two seconds here. You can put it at zero if you feel, uh, oh, if you feel, well, apparently you can't, uh, <laughs> but whatever. 
And uh, basically, you can also, so now you have a project, and if you want to be even more specific, so, you know, I'm orgadem here, uh, what I want is create a task. That's, you know, kind of a subtask. And now I can be like, um, usually I try to follow exactly what I have on hack and plan, so it's way simpler. So let's say, you know, I have inside and doors, I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting inside and dash door. So I know this, I'm talking about the door, and so now... You can kind of get rid of that. We don't need that. Yep. Now I'm going to start and stop. It's going to, you know, load. And now whenever I whenever I work on door, I'll click here and it'll start the counter. You can work on it, count your hours, and once you're done, you know, you just stop. Here you go. It's, you know, giving you a global and then if you click on here on the left, it's going to give you a detailed view. So I worked 1 second and 6 seconds. If you realize, ah, fuck, I forgot to, uh, you know, sometimes it happens, you forgot to put Clockify, you can edit those things. So let's say you've worked five hours. Uh, now it's five hours. And same, if you forgot to stop Clockify and now you have like 20 hours, you can rectify it. Honestly, that's about the only way I use Clockify. There's a lot of things. There's a dashboard, there's a report and stuff. If you're really fancy, you probably can make use of it. I only use the time tracker. So usually, you know, I go, oh, how much time have I worked on inside door? You know, all five hours and I'll go, oh, well, oh, only 10. <laughs> There's a problem here. So in my work log, I can uh, edit everything. You know, you can log it here. And usually, I think if you do like minus five, that works. Here we go. Yeah. Now I've worked my five hours. And now I'm basically just going to um, uh, file it. So this is the invoice that was given me by... Uh, um, a uh, one of my employers that I've been working for a year and a half on, and I just kind of love this invoice because it's really simple. Give you that name, blah blah. And what I do now, when I need to invoice something, I go, I look on Hack and Plan, and I'm like, oh, okay, so uh, I've worked on, you know, I've I finished door. It took me five hours, so I'll just go, uh, you know, inside door, and that took me five hours, and Let's imagine, you know, the world is perfect and I'm paid $1,000 an hour. I can go like, well, you know, $5,000. And uh, yeah, that's as simple as that. And once I'm done, uh, once I'm done filing it, here we go. You know, uh, this way I know what, what is done but not filed, what is filed, what is, you know, very, very simple. Uh, the last thing I would like to touch on is uh, just file management in general. What I like to do with my files is having a main work folder and then just uh, have an invoice folder, which I put all my invoices in and my documents and stuff. And then um, I have different folders. I do it by week. I don't really recommend it. It just, it works in my head. Uh, you know, what I do is I, um, I do like week and then I kind of, explain to myself what I've done that week's that week once I'm done with it. So I'm like, oh, week one, I worked on door, hinges, and chest. And week two, basic house, stuff like that. I feel like it's better to just do it by, uh, like, uh, big categories, kind of like, you know, by hack and plan categories, like inside and outside, stuff like that. I've tried, it doesn't work. For me, I do weeks. Uh, but something I do think like, is very important is also... Please rename your PSDs and rename them exactly like, you know, the hack and plan and Clockify stuff. This way, you never can be like, what the fuck is this? It's always perfectly organized. It takes a bunch of time, but it's going to save you so much hassle. Uh, it's kind of crazy. And the last thing, kind of a bonus thing, uh, on Photoshop, I do like to organize myself um, in a certain way. What I like to do is having a little banner at the bottom. You know, this one is done like really quickly, but sometimes projects have already banners, so you can ask for one. Sometimes you just, you know, can make a simple one uh, with like the name of the main project, then, you know, name of your, you know, the, the sub project and then doors with your name, last name and the date. This way you're sure it's kind of pretty. You have, you know, it, it's easier to file. It's really, really nice. And, um, and inside the PSD themselves, I do like to, you know, have things that are, you know, kind of clean. Um, 
the way I work is I work with uh, line, specular, and flat colors, and then on top I have shadows. Um, you know, this way, if something needs to be changed, it's really, really easy for me to change it. You know, let's say, like, uh, uh, we actually want the buffalo to be gold. I can just go on my flat, just select. Since I worked in 100% opacity, I can just select that color, you know, just make it gold, keep that selection, and on the specular, just, you know, kind of make a golden specular. And, you know, just lock it, fill it, and now, you know, it's gold, and that took me five seconds. The shadows are kept because they're like a, they are layer, they're like a, this kind of layer on top, so it's all independent of the color. It's really, really uh, helpful, and it just saves you, saves you a lot of hassle. So, you know, I hope that was useful for you, and, you know, good luck.